and oh, wow. to the woman's cave. What? I waited for the red light. And she said it so professionally. I feel like she's going to be like, welcome to the field. <laughs> yes, I would try. I would try. You'd be like, welcome to Jeez. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> but we professionally don't do this anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it anymore. I, I, I spent all my professionalism right there. I'm Jade. And I will not. I had to be semi-professional. I looked in the mirror. I looked well, the mirror. The, the mirror? Video. The mirror, though? It's the same thing. Where, where's the mirror? It's right there. Oh my goodness. No. Oh, no. no, I looked into the camera and I was like, oh my goodness, it looks like I have raccoon eyes. So I have to do something. <laughs> to raccoon eyes. Though. But the fact that I have like just black eyes at this point, it's wow. so sad. Anyway, wow. moving on. Wow. Hey, we have books. Oh, you thought they were kidding about the silly banter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did. He was like, I guess, always think we're kidding. And then. And then it gets silly and they're like, wow, y'all weren't kidding at all. Yeah, so we both literally <laughs> like guys with pop poetry or just a fun way of saying we wrote books full of poetry, right? So, and I thought the voice, he's a top four, and I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons, and I thought being grown up was easy, and I thought I did my journey alone. Two of them are available on Audible. All three of them are available on Amazon. And then we have If Only I Were Me, available only on Barnes & Noble. So, um, with 25 hottest indie authors, artists, well, and advocate advocate. magazine oh, we no. have. Those are one, and those books are like four of the 23, 23 we, okay. area books that we wrote in the last couple of years. Yeah, not yeah. important because we have That's a super important because we have a co host. Uh-huh. <laughs> I am Tanya Todd. I'm an author and actress from Las Vegas. Fabulous. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say you can find out everything you're lazy doing on www.amazon.com. Okay, Ooh. now, <laughs> now that I did that, <laughs> now that I've done that, Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Paul Campanella. I am an actor, musician, singer, producer, director, everything artistic I can be. And uh, from Las Vegas right now, originally from Buffalo, New York. And um, I think you said a fun fact. I can recite Cinderella backwards. Wow. See, now, now I want to hear it, but that's no. I know. It's like, well, I need some evidence of this. (laughs) I'll give you just a little clue, all right? I'll give you a little taste. Once upon a time in a corn country, there lived a beautiful girl named Rindersella. Rindersella lived with her muggly other and two sap histers. Also in the same corn country lived a hung and pransom hints. Wow. And why do you know that? <laughs> you grew up in Belfast. I was part of a, a show group that we used to do comedy routines and we stole that routine. It was actually originally done, I think, on the old TV show, Hee Haw, there was a, uh, a, a comedian actor on that show named Archie Campbell, and he would do fairy tales, like he would say Rindersella, <clears throat> and then he would do um, uh, Goldilocks backwards, or you know that stuff, Goldilocks, Red Riding Hood, uh, Cinderella, he would do them all like I just did, he would do them backwards. So we stole that from him and put it as part of our little comedy bit in the show. And after I memorized it, it never left my brain. It's been in there for decades. Of all the things to store, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but that's in my head from 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, you know, they say that like um, your, your brain waves are, what you're going to remember is really cemented in anything you learn before 25. Yep. Actors, actors and musicians, I think everything they have probably faced. <laughs> somewhere, it's back it's there, somewhere. Much there. If you yep. learn for a role or you're singing it every night, it's there. You can be like, yep. 102, I have Alzheimer's, but I know my songs. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you are a wonderful acting teacher. I hear so many wonderful things about you and your way to speak. Thank you. What do you think are the, your top three tips for success as a teaching, as a teacher of acting? Wow, I need to drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, first and foremost, I think um, one, one of the things that I approach the whole craft with is um, details. It's about paying attention to details. And the more you can pay attention to the details, the more interesting your performance can be. And I think so many actors, uh, especially when they start out, they just, they're just focused on their dialogue lines. You know, I got to memorize my dialogue. You know, and they really don't get a sense of story um, and they don't get a sense of even their environment or their occupation, which can affect behavior. So what I focus on as a coach is your behavior and 
you know, why you're behaving the way you're doing, what's your objective in the scene, things like that. So with the attention to detail, as, as people get more acclimated to, you know, going beyond just memorizing the dialogue, they come up with more interesting performances and they actually, you know, take the time to create a character as opposed to someone just walking in and spewing the lines that the writer wrote. <laughs> Tanya, you have questions. I do. You're quite the multi-hyphenate, Paul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to tell us briefly, just walk walk us through your journey and what brought you to Las Vegas? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, literally from the time I was six years old, I was acting and doing music things. I mean, I, I remember running around the neighborhood with my friends doing West Side Story. You know, I mean, we were, we were the, yeah, exactly. We were the mine, you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. So, um, so yeah, so it just started early. My parents were both musically inclined. My mother was a piano player and she was the choir director at church. My father was a uh, tenor singer and played a little bit of guitar. Uh, my brother uh, wound up playing Hammond B3 organ in groups. So my whole house was always surrounded by music. And then the acting thing was just always something I was interested in, you know, playing cowboys when I was a kid and all that stuff. Um, so my, my initial um, journey into the entertainment field was musical. So it was in bands, it was traveling the country, playing in nightclubs and showrooms and things of that nature. Um, and Las Vegas at that time was sort of a destination for me. You know, I always wanted to, to be here and be an entertainer on the strip, so to speak. Um, and then, uh, so what, you know, family happened, life happened, and that had to be set aside. So, um, you know, I was married, had kids, so kind of went into the day gig world for many years, but still kept active with music and started studying acting as well. And then um, about 15 years ago, um, things changed in our life back east. As I mentioned, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and uh, really started to hate the winters a lot. <laughs> I was going to ask you how you could stand it. So <laughs> I know I just it was I grew up in it my whole life and as I got older I ha I hated it more and more. So anyway, back in 2001, uh, my wife and I came out uh, for a trip here for a vacation and <clears throat> here in Las Vegas there were two uh, entertainers that were headliners on the strip. One was Clint Holmes, and if you remember, he had a hit way back when called Playground in My Mind. And, um, and then another show group called the Shintas, they're a family, the Shintas, both of which were from my hometown in Buffalo. In fact, the Shintas were literally in the same neighborhood. I, they'd go to, they'd, they were at my house, I'd go to their house. But they came out here and they had a huge success. They were headliners at the Rio for six years. Clint was the headliner in the showroom at Harrah's. So we came out in 2001, saw both of them. And um, I'm like, I can do this, <laughs> you know? So uh, four years later, uh, things, things occurred that uh, circumstances changed in our life where we were able to make the move. And um, so we made the move and it was about maybe about six months here before I got my first gig. And my first gig here, my first major acting gig was on the strip in a show called Tony and Tina's Wedding. <laughs> um, very famous show, been around for decades. And um, so I started working that the the acting gigs. It's funny. I came here initially to do music, but the acting gigs actually happened faster and more often than the um, than the music gigs because things started to change on the music scene here. They went to something called four walling. Do you know what that is? So entertainers, instead of being paid by the casino, you know, you would come in and you sign a contract with the casino and you'd be the entertainer and they'd pay you, right? Well, that didn't happen. What happened was they went to four walling, which meant if you wanted to play in a showroom on the strip, you had to rent the room and they had nothing to do with it. And all of a sudden, oh, well, how much is it to rent the room? Oh, $10,000 a week. Uh -huh. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, I guess, I guess that's not going to happen. Right. So, so acting just started to happen more and more and more and more. And then uh, things just progressed from there, started landing roles in independent films and then started to get some bigger features. Had a chance to work with Kevin Hart in uh, Think Like a Man 2 and uh, Michael Madsen and C. Thomas Howell in something called Dirty Dealing. 
uh, Kevin uh, James in Mall Cop 2, although uh, my scenes were totally cut out. <laughs> so that, that, never made, yeah, that, <laughs> that never made it to the screen. So um, that's basically it right there. It was just kind of a sum of all those parts coming together and just coming up with this mix. Michael Madsen is one of your favorites, isn't he? Yeah, I really like him. And he's a great guy. I was really excited to work with him and really happy when we got to meet. We had a great conversation. We had, we were, you know, we were waiting for the cameras to get set up for our scene. And we probably, I think we just chatted for at least 20, 25 minutes straight. We were just talking and talking and talking. And I was asking him stuff about his early career because I was a fan for, he had an old TV show back a long time ago. And we got on this, he got on this big discussion about that show. So we just had a great time chatting and then we did our scene and it, it just flowed really well. It just moved really well. I don't think we took more than two or three takes to do it, you know, and it was, it was great. It was a great experience. I made him laugh and we had a good time and a really good time. How did you end up with a residency here? Um, well, what happened was, is over the years, I kind of found a niche here in the music scene of doing um, Motown soul and blues and Memphis soul. And um, so what I did was I went to the House of Blues, right? The name House of Blues. Right. <laughs> Figured I'd link up with their brand and I pitched them an idea. And I said, here's what, I'm, here's what I'd like to do. You know, most musicians approach a gig like, you know, hey, hire our band, we're really good, which is probably very truthful here in Vegas because there's a lot of great musicians and great bands. Well, my approach was more from the marketing side of things. I said, here's what I do, but here's what I'm going to do to promote the gig. And I went through a whole list of things that I was going to do for advertising, Facebook ads, <clears throat> things of that nature. A marketing plan? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I went in with a marketing plan and um, the manager loved it. And literally four weeks later, I started the residency and I've been there now for over three years. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Do you think that your acting helped you to figure out how you could get a residency? Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what actually did it. Um, remember I said that uh, life happened and I had to put aside my career for a while. Well, my life that happened was in sales. Oh, so I was I, I worked for I did several different selling jobs. I worked for um, major insurance companies. I worked for one of the largest technology companies in the world. And it was all sales. I, I got awards for sales and stuff like that. So it was the concept of having that sales training that really helped more than anything. Oh, it paid off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another question of mine. Because yes. Many people like those paintings. For them, right? So they, they were like, I was going to be an author, I was going to be an actress, I was going to be a musician, and now I have a day job. And I like how you took your what you did for your day job all those years and looped it back in to your passion. How did you, how did you do it? How did you have the um, what's going to do with it? <laughs> so go ahead and be like, hey, I'm going to use uh, all my skills to make it. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It, you know, it all comes back to that, like you said, the word passion, right? It all comes back to that. It all comes back to your own inner drive. I can remember sitting uh, in our house back in Buffalo in the middle of winter. And I was looking out the window at the backyard and just saying, I don't want to be here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I love Buffalo. I love the city. I love the people. The food is phenomenal. Oh my but just the, but just the environment, you know, just the environment there. I, I just felt I couldn't expand. I couldn't get better. I wasn't going to go beyond where I was there in my career, especially. And like I said, Vegas had always been a, a destination in the back of my mind. And then to have friends living here that were successful, that were on the strip, that were doing it, really inspired me to say, you know what, I can do this. So we made a plan and we did it. And without the support of my wife and my kids and all of that, this would never even be possible. How does an artist, an artist find the confidence to go after exactly what they want? Like, for instance, someone might have a role and they're like, well, I've never done a role like that before. But they know that's like their ultimate goal role, their dream role, their dream yeah. role. What, what is the internal conversation that an artist have to have with themselves? So, you awesome. know, it just, it just comes down to making the decision, just deciding and saying, what have I got to lose? You know, I can stay where I am and not achieve my dreams, or 
I can take the risk and do it and try, you know, at least I know that, you know, there's an old saying, if you, you know, if you, uh, if you reach for this, if you reach for the stars, you might reach the sky, you know, that type of thing. So, I mean, by, I, I'm no means any type of a famous actor or, you know, headliner on the strip, but I achieved those goals in my own way. Okay. I got to be on the big screen with major people like Kevin Hart and, and Michael Madsen. I, I have a residency at a Las Vegas strip hotel in Mandalay Bay at the House of Blues. And so it, it just, you go out, you do what you do, you work at it every day, you take that little step forward and things will start to happen, but you have to be of the mindset that there's no, there's no plan B. I already did my plan B when I went to my day job, right? So that, that already happened in my life. I had plan A, it didn't work, life happened. So plan B kicked in, but then there was a point where plan B had to end and go back to plan A. <laughs> so now it was, what do you have to lose? And there's no plan B at this point. I have and to. And you're not done yet. Right. Exactly. Hopefully. All right. Yeah. So Hopefully there's more to come. Why not Los Angeles? Well, because the, remember the original passion for Vegas was the whole idea of being an entertainer on the strip. Mm -hmm. So that was still part of the equation. So I found Vegas, you know, actually the acting thing in Vegas was a happy accident, you know, because at the time we moved here back in 2005, there were a lot of quote shows on the strip and around the strip that involved acting like Tony and Tina's wedding. You know, it worked out perfect. Oh, I, I was, I meant to say after landed the acting gig to Vegas, <laughs> why not Los Angeles? <laughs> uh, well, it's Los Angeles is a difficult place to live. I can still go there. It's yeah. only a four hour drive. And I've been there many times for auditions and I booked the gigs out of Los Angeles. Um, I booked a Miller Lite commercial. I booked a major film that we did in, in the Bay Area a few years back called Mr. Invincible. I booked that from an audition in LA. You know, so, um, so LA is still, it's in the mix. I just don't live there. Thank God. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. He, probably, he probably got stuck in the traffic and was like, I will never live yeah, here. Exactly. Like, not right there. <laughs> that, that, that. Yep. So let's go back to ask some questions more about, I don't know, the technical side of things. Tanya. Okay. I want to discuss your success with coaching because okay. you, you say that you have this marketing background, but you're super popular. You don't even seem to recruit for your classes. I only see referrals. How do you manage that without traditional marketing? Um, well, be because of results. That's the only way I measure things is, is what I'm doing, does what I do get results. So, um, you know, I've got three uh, actors, you know, I, I also produce short films and, fe and I did one feature film. And in every one of those uh, projects, the, the, the female lead in my first short film won Best Actress at a film festival. My Tyler Lumpkin film, which is the feature film, was nominated for Best Actor, Best Film, and uh, Best Screenwriting. And then one of my clients, Alex, who I think you may have met in the past, Alex Kirsting, uh, did a film called Butter, and he just won Best Actor at a film festival. He was at my orientation. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. He came up and spoke. Exactly. So it's and just your best result. actor. Was that Ryan Mercier? What's that? Was Ryan Mercier the one who won for Tyler Lumpkin? No, Ryan Remark. Ryan okay. Remark was Tyler Lumpkin. Yeah. Uh, he didn't win. He was nominated. They were, they were, they were all, uh, Tyler Lumpkin was nominated in those three categories. And then, of course, my, my prize uh, guy is Jay Haran, right? Former UFC fighter, MMA champion. And he turned to stunt work and then started to graduate into acting. And, you know, five years later, he's sitting in a car with Denzel Washington for 10 days filming <laughs> Equalizer 2, you know, which he did his audition for right here in my studio. So um, I, it's just results. It's about getting results. And so you're right. I, I don't really actually actively recruit I mean, I do the orientation sessions, which you attended, um, but it's now really a referral thing because people are seeing the results, you know. And Jade and Wilnona, you, you said, you know, TJ and Steve, 
you've seen the, the quality of Paul's work and what he can do. Oh, oh, <laughs> let me say, TJ, and then he took on Henry, like, at the last one, and he rocked it. I was like, oh, we must interview I said, like, I need to know this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how this happened, but we need to know this Paul. <laughs> okay, I don't have any more questions. Okay, because I, I want to hear a little bit of, more about Tyler Lumpkin real fast, just because I want to know, how did you come up with the concept for that, and what was your production process like? Okay, well, Tyler Lumpkin is a character that Ryan Remark actually created when we were doing Tony and Tina's wedding. Because there was part of the cast in the original Tony and Tina's was called Black Staff, meaning these, these were the waiters and waitresses at the wedding. So he created this character to be one of these Black Staff characters. So Tyler Lumpkin was a waiter. <laughs> so he created this character and Ryan is a brilliant improviser really brilliant. I mean, he'll take stuff to so many different places and then circle back around and hit you with something that's just hysterical. Um, so I actually wanted to do, I said, we've got to do this. We've got to take this character and make a movie, you know, figure out a scenario or a circumstance that he's in and just write around that. So what we did was we did not write a full script. We just wrote 20 different scenarios, but we had a through line to the story. And um, so we started auditioning. Any actor who came into audition had to be able to improvise because we didn't have a script to give them to learn lines. So they would come in, we'd give them the scenario and they would improvise with Ryan. And we hired the actors based on their ability to improvise. Production process was uh, very, uh, it was over a long period of time because when you have a zero budget film, which is what we had, you're really at the mercy of everybody's schedule in their free time. So it probably took a full year from the very first scenes we shot till the final edit of the film itself. Um, just going in and out and doing different scenes and having to rework a couple of scenes and things like that. And then we finished it. We submitted it to some film festivals. We got officially selected to several. And then it started getting these nominations for awards. So, and we wound up winning um, we won, uh, what they call it, this, uh, in, in Chicago, it was called the Real Comedy Film Festival. And we won um, for best film, you know, second runner up for best film. So Very we won cool. that award. So now we're officially award-winning filmmakers. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Very exciting, I like it. What's next for you? Um, what's next? More classes, obviously, and hopefully some, uh, some big acting gigs and more uh, and continuation of the residency at the House of Blues. That's fabulous. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, they can go to my website, which is Paul X, my middle initial, paulxcampanella.com. And there are three panels on that website. And one is for production, for like I do the short films and stuff. One is for coaching, and one is my performance for acting and music. And I will say, if I have an audition that I need to pay particular care for, I will go to Paul for that. You know, I can do some <laughs> on my own, but it's like, oh no, this one, <laughs> this one I need Paul. <laughs> I definitely recommend him. And Tanya is such a great uh, client, student. Um, you know, she's so perceptive, very intelligent. Um, and, you know, being a writer herself, she understands the concept of story. That's what, one of the things I try to teach the actors is you must understand story. Jesus. And and she kind of he kind of said everything that we would say about Tony. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like besides she's tall, besides she's tall, like yeah. you have to say she's tall because we're not. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> so, yeah, we have to say that. But besides that, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for taking time out and coming on the show today. And thank you so much for coaching some two of our favorite actors. Three, three yeah. of our favorite actors. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. <laughs> she's an actress for me too. Like okay. She's, She's Tanya, the everything. Well, well if, you, if you ladies decide to get into, into the acting side of things, give me a call. Oh, never will. oh I, don't, I don't think I will. <laughs> and I'll come to Vegas donuts. soon. I love the donut. I love donuts too much to give it up oh, for acting. And it, listen, if you, you schedule a trip, donuts. <laughs> if you schedule a trip to Vegas, we always schedule, it, schedule it when I do my show at the House of Blues. We'll have you in as a guest. Okay, absolutely. We would love to come. All right. Where can people find out more about you? Because, you know, you have to say your website because I love it. <laughs> I'm on social media at Ms. Tanya Todd, and my website is www.mstanyatodd.com. I'm telling you, we're doing this day. like five years from now. We're, I'm still going to be smiling about her website. It's, it's going <laughs> to happen. People are going to be like, what's going on with ladies and Tanya? I mean, I don't know. We're good friends. 
Leave us alone. You can find out everything you ladies are doing on www.andrethought.com. You can like check out everything on the homepage. Go see can the. Can I please say it this time? You know, <laughs> why don't you say it before you say that? I think that's that's how we're gonna have to do. Okay, go ahead. I just want to say while you're on the homepage, go to the Lady Show podcast where you can hear some of the wonderful actors Paul has coached read my script. <laughs> <laughs> it's a table read though, so. I just want so just in case Paul goes and be like, why, why, why did you mess? I don't want him to say anything, but okay. There you go. Moving okay. on, right. to the ladies tab. Okay, yeah. So you go to the ladies tab and go down to the middle and see the charities that we proudly support. We really would appreciate it if you could do the same. Yes, we know it's 2020 and money is funny, as the old saying says. So you might not be able to donate money, but maybe someone for your time. If you're not able to do that, just add them on social media or send them a nice email and say. Thank you for doing this wonderful work in the world because we all need encouragement. I need encouragement too, and I'm a narcissist, so you know the charity (laughs) piece. Yes. So with that, I leave you with wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it, so peace and love, you guys. Run well, no, no. And Jade. Oh yeah. Thanks for listening.